I'll be showing eight new features in Teams for Education. This includes weighted grading categories, a bunch of assignments, improvements, and simplifications, search coach, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is the long time request of weighted grading categories. I'm going to go in the upper right and choose the assignment settings gear here. And you're going to see grade settings, a new area. And this lets you establish weights to reflect the different importance for assignment types. I'll go and turn this on. And this pops up the new manage grading categories. So what I'm going to do is add a couple of different grading categories. So I'll hit plus here and you can give it a name and then the percentage in terms of the weighting. So I'll have projects and we'll put this to 40% and I'll hit add another one because your percentages have to add up to hundred. So click plus to add another one. And you can see it says 60% remaining. So let's add the other two. So I've had a daily work at 20%, assessments at 40%, and you can delete these and change them. And you can add as many as you want. Now I'll click save. These are now reflected right here. 40%, 20%, and another 40%. And if you wanna go back and change them, you can go right here. Now when I make a new assignment, I can actually add the grading categories to that. And these are also reflected in the gradebook. So I'm gonna to go to the gradebook really quickly here. Across the top, you see these different grading categories that were part of assignments. And you can filter. So if I click filter right here, now you have this new grading categories. If I drop this down, I can select all of them. If I want to filter on a certain grading category like daily work, I can click there and it'll just filter on those. So when I check this on, all of the grading categories with daily work are showing. And you can see right here, it also adds that little daily work filter. So I can add more if I want to go add assessments to that as well. Now it's added both across the top and I can close these really easily. That's how grading categories shows up in the gradebook. And next up, feature number two is the new assignments form. And I'm going to show how grading categories integrates there as well. I'll click on assignments here and I'll click create and then assignment. This is the brand new assignments flow. We've simplified it, made it easier to use and easier to navigate. So at the top, we still have our title and instructions. So we'll give it a quick title, then some instructions. Of course, add an image. Every assignment can use a nice Michael Scott picture. Now on the right hand side is where it gets much easier to navigate. So you can set the due date right here and you can set the time just like before. Right here, if you wanna allow late turn ins, you can click edit and it brings up the schedule date, due date and close date. So this is where you can do all those same things that you could do in the past with your assignment. Next up is what class or classes do you want it to go to? So I drop this down. I can choose multiple classes just like I could before. In this case, I'm just going to leave it simple and just go to the class that I'm in, which is LA period two. Dropping down all students, you can choose individual students, groups of students, or all students and future students. That might mean students who join your class later. All the same choices you had before. This is where you add points. And because I've had grading categories, this is where this new grading category shows up. So if this is part of the daily work category right there, that's reflected. You can add a rubric or a tag just like you could in the past. Now across the top, we have things like add to calendars. So right now, maybe I want to always add to the student and team owners calendars. You can set that where you want to post the notifications to. You can say general channel, but you could also post it to different channels if you had those in your team. And you can also turn in late notifications on. So when they have a late turn in, you can get notified. So we've exposed these a little bit higher right here so they're easier to find. I can save it as a draft or discard like before. And then the assign button has now a little split. So if I click this, I can schedule to assign this in the future instead of assigning it right now. So maybe I want to have this go out on Monday morning. I'll click here. We'll choose Monday and I'm going to choose 8 a.m. and click schedule. Now this is scheduled to go out Monday morning. You have a nice little scheduled tag here and you can see that grading category daily work 20% and I'm all set. The third new feature is average grade settings for students. So as the educator, you can enable the student to go see average grade settings. I'll click the gear right here in the upper right and there's an option average grade and it says allow students to view their average grade and trend over time in the grades tab. I'm going to turn this on. Now, if I'm a student, when I sign in, I can go to the grades tab and see my average grade. So let's switch over as the student now and show what that looks like. I'm signed in as a student and I'm going to go to my grades tab right here. This is the grade book. And because the educator enabled average grade right here, it says 98% is your average grade for the language arts period too. And I can see all the details right here, as well as those grading categories that we added 
just a couple of minutes ago. So this is really nice for the students to be able to see more details and their average grade on their end. The fourth new feature are improved list views for assignments, both for educators and students to make it easier to find assignment information. Now assignments right here in the class, I'll click, this is just the assignments for a single class. I'm gonna show this new feature though over on the left app bar for the assignments across all my classes. I'm signed in as the educator and there are five little pivots across the top here. So instead of one long list that has all the information that can be hard to find, instead, I'm gonna have these broken out. So upcoming means these are all the upcoming assignments. There's a nice line here and this shows things that are a little bit farther out across my classes so I get a sense across the whole board. A brand new one that we've added is ready to grade. We heard from educators that they wanted to be able to just click and have a pivot that showed them what are all the things that are ready to grade. So here you go. I have ready to grade here on the right hand side. It has, there are three ready to grade. This has two ready to grade. Okay, this one looks like it has 15 ready to grade. And if I click here, looking here, it looks like a bunch of different students have turned in their assignments. So these are all ready to grade. And I'll hit back. Another one is past due, which are all the assignments that are past due. This is also nice because now I can really quickly see, oh, this has four past due, 12 past due, and anytime I click in, I drill and see what were the assignments that were past due, and specifically by student. Returned, these are all the different assignments that I've returned, and then if I have any that are in draft format, I can see them across everything right here. This view works for the all assignments view across all my classes. It also works for individual classes. So if I'm right here in LA period two, you will see that same split out set of list view for all your assignments. This also applies on the student side. Let's switch over to a student and quickly see that. I'm signed in as a student and just like I did for the educator, I'm gonna click assignments on the left app bar to see all of my assignments across all my classes. Now what you see is upcoming and I've got all my upcoming assignments. Something that students really asked for though was how can I see ones that are past due? And right here at the top, there's this nice card, you have past due assignments. There's also a nice little red dot above past due that shows you've got some past due assignments. So I click here, it'll just switch me right over to past due. Oh my gosh, I've got a bunch of assignments that are past due. I'm gonna probably get in trouble here. I can also go to completed and see all the different assignments I've completed. That little card that you saw in upcoming, while it's not here, the next time I come back in, it will be there if I have past due assignments again. So we're always making sure the students know that card is gonna pop up and say, you have past due assignments if that's the case. The fifth new feature is the ability to mark an assignment as inactive. That's kind of like archiving assignments. That might be a case where maybe you finish the unit and you say, you know what, we don't need to worry about that assignment anymore. We're gonna kind of take it off the books. We're gonna archive that. What I'm gonna do is go to assignments and back in this new list view here, we're gonna go into past due because maybe this is an assignment that, you know what, pass, we're not gonna really care about it anymore and I wanna mark it as inactive. Right here, vocab test two, I will open this up and at the three dot menu right here, there's a new option that says mark as inactive. And there's like a little archive folder right there. I'll click this and it says mark this assignment as inactive. Inactive assignments are moved to the return tab and can no longer be turned in by students. So you essentially say, hey students, you don't need to worry about this one anymore. You can also reactivate that assignment in the future. You might decide, you know, I actually do wanna track that assignment. In this case, I will say mark as inactive. So I've marked that assignment as inactive. There's an indicator right here. If I go back and I go to the returned tab, you'll see vocab test two, it's now marked as inactive. If you go to the grades tab, we've also added this to the dropdown filter. So right here, you drop this down and you can say hide inactive assignments. You might say, I don't want that to show up in the grade book at all. I'm going to hide all the inactive assignments. If I wanna go back and I decide, you know what, I actually wanna go and turn that assignment back on. You can go back into here go to returned, open up that vocab test number two, hit the three dot menu and say reactivate assignment, there we go. And now it's back to active again and students can turn in. The sixth new feature is a long time request and that is app support for things like polls in your channel meetings, especially in education, a large number of channel meetings, now you can have apps in them. So I've set up my channel meeting here and I'm gonna open it up. Now at the top, I'll hit plus and this is before the meeting starts but you can do it during the meeting as well. I have all my different apps available now. So I'm gonna search for one of the most popular, which is polls. I'll select this, click add, and then save. 
Now I have all the features that you have in the normal polls app, which is powered by Microsoft Forms. Some suggestions on the side, I can create a new poll before the meeting starts. And also when I'm in the meeting, I can have all these things as well. So I'll just select this one here and we'll save it as a draft and I'll join the meeting. Now I'm in this channel meeting and you'll see the polls app is right here and I can still add other apps. So it's really easy to add apps into your channel meetings. So I have all the other choices that I would have to add an app into my channel meeting, just like in a regular meeting. And I'm gonna launch my poll. There we go. The seventh new feature are improvements to reflect our well-being tool built into Teams. I'm an educator here. I'm gonna click on reflect on the left-hand rail here. On the right-hand side, we've added some more visual explorations and features for class activities right here. So first is explore together view. I'll click this. And hopefully you've already seen Together View. This is a, just a nice, easy way to see what it is. This pulls together all the well-being emotions of the students in your class through Feelings Monsters and lets you see them at a glance. It's really great to check the pulse of your class. Now I'll click Close. The second one is the new breathing exercises. So take a breathing break, click here. This is a nice way to practice breathing in your class and I'll click Close. Another new one is the Reflect Emotion Board. If I click in here, this allows educators to build a physical space to have students reflect. Right here is a little example, but there's an entire emotion board kit that you can get and a way to collect the responses from your class with a mobile device. And some examples here of students and their different card labels. They can drop this down and choose all these different fun little labels for their reflect emotion boards. So I encourage folks to download the emotion board kit and try this out in your class. And right here is where you can collect responses with QR codes. I'll hit back. And lastly, explore trends. Reflect has all sorts of insights and trends. If I drill in here, this lets educators quickly access the insights for their class. I can scroll down and see the most common words and emotions and all sorts of other useful check-in information. If you wanna collapse the class activities, just click the little right arrow here and minimize that sideboard and the text goes away. The eighth new feature is the Search Coach app in Teams. Search Coach is now at general availability. It is a free app to help teach students how to do information literacy. That can be using search engines, determining search results and whether they're good or not, and ultimately how to become better digital citizens. If I go to the plus tab right here, there's a new app you'll see called Search Coach. And if you don't see it by default, you can search for it in the little app search bar here and find it. And I can click this and I'm gonna add it to my team. There's a nice about tab here. You can see all the details about what it is. Safe search is enabled by default. There are no ads in Search Coach at all. There's a nice little how-to video that educators can watch, but I'll hit save. And now Search Coach is added to my class. I'm gonna make this full screen. You can think about Search Coach as a search engine with training wheels. And I'm not gonna do the entire demo in this video. I've got a deep dive video. In the upper right, there's a link, and it's also in the description. Search Coach lets students practice using search engines in a safe environment. So things like domain, how do domains work, whether it's .com or .org, how do we do filtering? I can click these on and it helps teach me how to build queries. I can learn how to filter by file type, how to use date range, or even how to use operators. All these capabilities are part of Search Coach. In this case, let's do a search about coronavirus and I'll hit go. What's nice is that Search Coach has a really clean screen and in this case, because I filtered on site.org and edu, it only pulls up edu sites and .org sites. And I can have lots of different information. We've simplified the results and we have NewsGuard integration. And NewsGuard is something that helps give transparency into what the site is about. Credibility, transparency. I can even drill in and get a full NewsGuard analysis on any site. In this case, it's looking at John Hopkins University. It shows the ownership financing, all the background and credibility. The other nice thing is that Search Coach adds search tips like this that you can use and students will get over time. We'll go back. There's a search tip of the day, so this rotates, so instead of an image of the day, you get a search tip of the day. Educators can also customize things. So I'll go to class settings. Maybe I wanna choose a different background like this. Hit apply. Now I've got a nice background. I can also go back to class settings and go to filters. I can add different types of filters. I can add fact checking filters. So turn this on. I can teach students all about fact checking. We can have some built in ones like this. So for example, I'll go to apply. This has added a fact check button. So if I click this, maybe I want to search across factcheck.org 
and it adds site colon factcheck.org. It's only going to search across that site. And I'm going to type in, was the moon landing faked? And I'll hit go. Now it's only going to pull up links from the factcheck.org site. So here we go. Lots of different information that is only from factcheck.org. This helps teach students about that concept as well as searching specifically over a site. Search Coach also helps teach students about how they can bias their own queries. So let's put in the old classic, are dogs better than cats and hit go. Here's a search tip. Searches that use comparisons or language like better than can result in opinions that sound like facts. And as an example, is sugar good for you? We'll return a bunch of results that tells you why sugar is good for you. So these search tips can help teach core concepts of digital literacy. And finally, Search Coach provides insights for educators. So if I collapse this and I go to insights, there's an entire tab here that lets me drill in where I can explore search trends. So if I go in here, we'll show an example of a class that's been searching. You can see searches attempted, open first result only, no search results only. These are really powerful insights and I get it at a student level and a class level. So if people are only opening up their first result or they're never opening up results, that's powerful. As I scroll down, I can see what search filters are being used in my class, what domain filters are being used. It looks like .edu is being used a lot. File types, so if I'm searching on PDFs or PowerPoints and common domains. One of the most powerful things is common search terms. So it builds a word cloud on what students are searching for. So this is really powerful information that educators historically don't have access to, but they do now with Search Coach. And again, if you want a deeper dive video into every single feature, go hit the video up on the right or check out the link in the description and there's a deeper dive. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.